Hello, welcome to the Courageous Self Care Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Marlette. On this show, we get into self care that moves the needle. And sometimes self care can seem like a whole lot of things to add to our already chaotic lives. And that is not how I want you to see self care. What I found is like when I first started with self care, I was like, oh my gosh, now there's like 10 more things that I need to do when I get up and before I go to bed. How is this going to even fit in? And so I went from that over the course of learning what courageous self care actually is and implementing it into my life, realizing, oh, it's not about more about doing, it's about how I'm living my life. So we can have an approach to life that is all about others and always giving to try to make ourselves feel better. Or we can have an approach where we also, it feels great to give. So I'm not saying don't give, but what I'm saying is give from a place of fullness. And that happens when you can give to yourself first and prioritize your own well-being, whether that's your physical well-being, your emotional, your mental, your spiritual. We want to be able to fill our own cup up first so that then we can give from this place of overflow rather than from a place of bitterness and emptiness and resentment, which I'm very familiar with because I used to be someone who poured out all the time to others and thought it was not okay to pour into myself. I have learned and changed my ways and I see such a difference in my life and now with my clients' lives that I want to share how to actually do that without adding all of these extra to-dos into your life. So that is courageous self-care in a nutshell. That is what we get into on the show. Now, last year, I did a Courageous Self-Care Festival because I really wanted to make some eye-to-eye contact and heart-to-heart hugs with real-life people rather than always being on screens and podcasts. And although I think this is fantastic that we get to connect in this way, no matter where you are in the world, there is no substitute for being in person with other like-minded people. And so I created the Courageous Self-Care Festival. Lo and behold, it's happening again this year after a declaration I made on stage last year when I was all excited and in that great energy of being with live people. And so here we are this year. And the speakers are phenomenal. The vendors in the wellness marketplace are also phenomenal. And I realized that it's not everyone's going to be able to make it to the festival. And so I'm doing a series of insider interviews so that I can share these amazing people and their wisdom with you, no matter where you are in the world. So lucky you, you tuned in today. You're going to hear from one of our fantastic speakers, Mary June Tracy. So Mary June, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited about this. A little bit nervous, but excited. (laughs) Well, that means courage is involved. So that's perfect. (laughs) Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, so tell us a little bit about who you are and what you love to do, Mary June. Okay, well, my name's Mary June Tracy. Um, Many people may know me as the Guru Mama. I am a psychic medium, and that is my practice. I do readings, I do tarot readings and uh, natal readings. I'm also an astrologer. I am, I just love to coach, spiritual coach bringing in that spiritual element to what we do. And my business is that of creating um, time and abundance for people, Mm. men and women, to opening themselves into their own light and helping them to step into that, step into that and having them understand that they are the pebble in the pond and that they do do the ripples, and they are the ripples. They are that effect within the world around us. And it happens through uh, readings. It happens through many of my classes. I teach um, one of my biggest classes is the Journey Club, which is um, two parts, and it goes through how to tell your story, recognize your story, and bring in, as you would call, the courageous self-care of who you are and and, uh, what you want to offer to this world. And in that, I always bring in the element of the moon and astrology because it's bringing the energy of above down to us below because whatever happens above happens below. And it's a, what I'm going to call a gravitational pull. It happens and you can't deny it. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, that's 
what I do. And then I have my family also, but that's my main focus. My main focus is my spiritual work and my family understands that. And it's just the ebb and flow of, of what we do, what I do. Hmm. I love that you are teaching about like very straightforward. This is your journey. This is how you present it. And then also bringing in the spiritual element that mm -hmm. is so fascinating to me. And that's such a unique approach so i'm curious how did you get into becoming a medium and an intuitive guide well i was raised in it uh, my grandmother was well we were very good good catholics so we're going to call well, well on the outside we're good catholics we're kind of <laughs> but on the inside and my out of being the afterthought of the afterthought so as um good catholics you never know when you're going to get pregnant so my mother had me six years after the last child and I was sort of like, here I am. And my grandmother um, noticed something in me out of all the kids. I was the youngest of all the grandchildren uh, and she just started to foster things in me and allowed me to see what I was seeing. So if I saw a fairy, yes, that's that speck on the wall that you saw that that that's a fairy. Um, if something bigger, an orb showed up or we saw something, she goes, oh, that's, a, that's an angel. And started to begin to tell me what angels are and bring in that element of the divine and the element of the God, of Jesus, of God. That's what, you know, that's who they, you know, called God. And then she also really um, never let go of the element of the feminine or the goddess. So that was my upbringing and she taught me how to read tea leaves at five and use a pendulum I mean we were always using a wedding ring over a teacup to ask questions of when are we going to get married when will I meet that that you know that Mr. Wright and that cute guy <laughs> you know she showed us how to do that with a pendulum with a ring you know just a wedding with her wedding ring so it was things like that and so it was always there always um being the knowing I guess you'll call it always knowing things, knowing when things would happen. My father had it. He was caller ID before we had caller ID. <laughs> That's awesome. Rotary phones, <laughs> phone would ring and he knew who it was. Wow. Um, you could shuffle a, a deck of cards and he could tell you each card, what it was as you were lifting it. And that's without counting cards. That was oh my goodness. random. Um, my mother would uh, have dreams. And she would tell you about the dreams and it would come true. Like she'd have dreams of like, I guess you'd call prophecy dreams would mm -hmm. say, don't go to this party. This is what's going to happen. Or um, if you apply here, you'll get the job. I saw you, you working behind the desk and things like that. So mm -hmm. my mom had those types of things. So it was um, kind of ordinary, but we were always told not to talk about it because we didn't want to be excommunicated. <laughs> So you did, you did it, but you didn't do it, you know? Yeah. So as I grew up, I was kind of the, always the oddball kid who knew things, um, had feelings about things, uh, would get horribly sick from school because mm -hmm. of the energies and, uh, you know, come home. And then of course my grandmother, uh, would, you know, give us teas and then she'd bring in the teas and the herbs. My eldest sister will tell you that she never knew that. She learned how to cook. My <laughs> They taught her how to cook. I don't cook. <laughs> I'm cooks. So I was taught how to bring in teas, how to um, call in the angels and uh, do different prayers and bring in those prayers. And those prayers were basically what we would call spells. But my grandmother wouldn't use that word because, you know, you wouldn't use that word. But mm -hmm. um, so that's how I got into it. And it cultivated from there. I've been a Reiki master uh for over 30 years now and that was just something you know my mom met um uh well i met her at 16 mrs takiyama in penticton when she came to uh bring in uh a master level class to one of my mom's friends and uh we just yeah it just little things little pockets like that in my journey that uh helped to cultivate what i do today Mm, so you've been at it for a long time. For a long time. Yeah, yeah. I love yes. that. That's fascinating. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. So we're <laughs> going to get into what you're, tell us what you're going to be sharing at the festival and why it's important to you. Oh, I'm going to share and I'm going to call it moon festing. 
And it's moon festing is when we are using the lunar cycles to co-create your life and nourish your body and soul because so much of us, we don't do that. Mm. And you may be familiar with the mainstream of, you know, the term manifesting, which we hear. And this is kind of like a way of manifesting, but I, th I feel like it's more involvement because we are actually taking the moon energy and understanding, you know, like we just finished a new moon in Scorpio and the energies of what the new moon in Scorpio means. And so understanding what, you know, from the new moon to the crescent moon, to the half moon, to the full moon, and those each phases of those moons are times for us to pause. Because so many times as, especially as women, we are in the constraints of a man-made time mm -hmm. and everything is a push, a push, a push, a push, a push. And when you start to moon fest, you start to flow. That means you start to pause, whether it's for five minutes, 15 minutes, an hour. You begin to take those pauses and understand that those pauses are important for you to rekindle, for you to refocus, to look at where where your focus is, where you are wanting to go, and what does need to be nourished. Because there's parts of us, if we're not nourishing, if one part of ourselves is out of balance, then everything else goes out of balance. It's like if you have more than one child, for instance, if one child needs special care, you have to take your energy to, to, to um, um, look after that child. The other ones aren't going to be, you know, um, they're still getting care. You're still doing that maintenance, but sometimes it could be, it could be finances. It could be body. It could be food. It could be your work or your spiritual work that needs that extra care. It could be relationships, you know, all different, all your different types of relationships and uh, working with that energy to create more people that are like-minded around you. So that I'm going to be speaking about and going into detail about um, how it works and uh, what we can do on a regular basis to implement that now. So giving tools so that we can commune with the divine from the human heart and the infinite soul so that we can live on this abundant earth. Mm. Well, I don't know much about the moon and its cycles, so I'm going to have to attend your talk and <laughs> learn from you because that all sounds very delicious and completely useful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I, I believe it is because, you know, as, as you say, like you don't fault, like, you know, understanding or understand the moon is that women are so aligned with the moon. Yeah. You know, our, our period is aligned to the moon, right? It goes... Mm -hmm cycle every 20 an average of about 29 days 30 days the moon changes every 29 and a half days hmm. so we have this alignment and it's just a funny little tidbit that um uh when when people the um uh like who sell tampons and things like that for women they've studied the moon cycle so they know when to advertise for women on oh, really when women <laughs> Women are having their cycle on average. Oh my gosh, that's yeah, and fascinating. It's, you know, it's usually sometime around the full moon. Cool. And so you'll find more advertisement of it around that time. Not that's that too funny. Point, but, you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, yes. Us using that information to their advantage for sure. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. I love yes. it. All right. Well, yeah, I'm definitely attending your talk. I need to, I feel a call to learn more about that. And mm -hmm. um, I'm super excited to hear that and to oh, have thank you. the audience um, benefit from your wisdom too. So we're going to shift into now a little bit more about courageous self-care. And I'm curious, Mary June, what does self-care mean to you? Mm, self-care means listening. Mm. Listening to my body. Self-care is, um, if you're not, for me, if you're not, if I'm not listening to my body, my body's going to tell me. Yeah, right. It's, it's going to react because your body never lies. Right. And it's when your body's saying, okay, maybe don't focus on this, focus, focus on something else. So it's like, if you have, like, I know for you, you have like 
hundreds of different projects on the go. (laughs) And you have all of these different projects on the go and you are like, almost like racing through them, trying to get this one done and this one done and this one and this one. When I stop to tune in, and this is where I start to do the care, it's like, okay, my energy isn't for this right now. I know it has to be done, but I know if I focus over on here, which may be a little bit more fun, then my energy's pepped up to do the next thing. Mm, Yeah. You see? And that's where the self-care comes in because I'm listening. Where, because now I have a um, a four-year-old uh, grandson and that, that, I mean, he comes in and he's, it's like, you know, the world has to stop, <laughs> has to stop or my so-called world to, for his attention, right? Mm-hmm. Because a four-year-old is not going to let up, um, you know, because they don't understand all of this stuff that we're doing. And so this is coming into that harmony that harmony and the divine flow. So that's what I do for my courageous self-care. It's, it's- mm. Yeah, that's super powerful. I love that you bring it into the body. And that's something that I uh, deeply resonate with and share with the clients I work with as well. Because like you said, the body never lies. It always mm-hmm. tells the truth. It's our GPS system. <laughs> and yes. it, it's, when you learn to listen to mm-hmm. where the energy is going, then yes, do work on this. No, don't work on that. Oh, I want, that was amazing. I want so much more of that mm-hmm. in my life. Oh, that is a definite, no, I never want to experience exactly. that again. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yeah. And I find the more I, I get into, you know, because I've always worked with the moon. Moon has been a part of my life since I was little. Um, my mother used to call me in and say, stop talking to the moon. The neighbors are watching. <laughs> I would be out there on the front lawn talking or my sister would get mad because I'd have to keep the, the curtains open um, because I wanted to feel the moon. <laughs> I'd first wow. the moon to shine on me when I slept and it would drive her crazy. Um, so it, you know, that energy was there and understanding more, especially when I do natal charts for people. Uh, because that's a picture of the instant that you were born. Mm -hmm. And it gives you an idea of the energies that you are carrying into this lifetime. And so many times we want to avoid that. We don't want to listen to that. We don't want to listen to our bodies because everything else around us is telling us something different. Mm -hmm. When you get into a natal chart and you get into the energies of the different planets, now we're getting into wow, okay, these guys really have a play in what my, what's going on in my life and where they are and how I'm feeling. And so that's also part of the, um, the self-care is, is mm-hmm. even tuning into not only where the moon is, but, you know, where's Jupiter today or where's, you know, Saturn and stuff and how are they playing a role in my life? Yeah, you're amplifying your listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And oh, I love that. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. <clears throat> that yeah, super powerful. I love that kind of information because I love discovering who I am and learning more about myself. And that I feel like when I learn more about myself, whether it's through astrology or um, other various forms of how different people work and connect, mm-hmm. then I can show up more of as who I really am at the core. And Mm -hmm. I think that's the journey that we're going on in life anyways, is remembering who we are and then sharing that incredible person with the world. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And for me, it's uh, having four, I have four kids, adult kids now, but it also helped me understand their personalities Yes, and how different they were. And, um, interaction, how they learned, um, how things moved for them, um, all different types of elements. So when you're, especially if there's, you know, a discipline or something, or you had to talk to them, talking to one child is so different Mm. than the other. Yeah. And it's just how they attain things, how they uh, receive the information. And it just helped, you know, make things flow a little bit easier sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) You know, uh, with, with just, um, with behaviors. 
Right. Or at least understanding why things aren't flowing. <laughs> oh yeah, ex exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. That's a big one. <laughs> awesome. I love that perspective on self-care. That's super valuable. And for the courage part, I would love for you to share with us something that not a lot of people know about you. I feel like you've shared a lot already, but, um, yeah, um, I'm, that's so hard because I'm <laughs> such an open book. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am such an open book and, uh, people who follow me cause I do Facebook live and, um, Instagram live and all of those social media things. So I, I talk about my life experience. I talk about a lot of things, uh, what's going on. One of the biggest things I think that people um, that's coming out more and more and people are finding is that because I've started a, a new kind of area of my life, mm -hmm. bringing it more into what I do, and it's called the Shabby Chic Witch. And Shabby Chic Witch is something of one who's very eclectic, who loves the bohemian, loves, but still loves to have modern day items yeah. about her, right? And, the sh and, and who will use recycled things and, and that along, but, but coming out more and being called the witch is mm. because it's such, it has such a weird idea in so many people's heads mm -hmm. of who, what a witch is and what a witch looks like and, um, coming out more and talking to people about it because a witch is any, anyone right? She can be, mm -hmm. she could be of any religion. She could be of any spiritual um, being. She can believe in any which way because it, it comes from their own power. So, and identifying with that word, because I think it was a word that was taken away from us yeah, and thrown, un thrown under the bus basically. And uh, so for centuries, it's been, it's, you know, when you hear it, people are just like, Oh, you know, yeah scared and they're like oh my god she's gonna do something evil to me and and having these horrible thoughts and without understanding exactly what you know a witch is so i think that's that's the biggest one and it's also because it's it's one that when you start doing that especially on a social media there you you do get um negative feedback mm -hmm. people they don't want to hear that or they um they don't want to even be educated from it. So that is a part that I think is really taking me a lot of courage. Mm -hmm. um, I am pretty good. I'm pretty good with conflict and people being boisterous to me and, and that, but this is sort of like a very intimate piece yeah. because it's, um, it's one thing to say, you know, I teach spell casting. It's another thing to say, I teach spell casting and I'm a witch. Right. You know, and adding that extra piece into it, it's um, opening up another door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I agree. That's very courageous of you. And uh, it's like we were talking about, like you're listening to who you are and who you're um, meant to be. And you're listening to that divine guidance. And even though it's scary and there is pushback and there are people who don't want to understand or learn more about that information and about who you are it's super courageous to show up anyways and to say mm -hmm. yeah take it or leave it yeah it's not for everyone yeah. and the people who no. need it and want it here i am here i am and it's i'm a huge believer in education like yeah. educate i don't you know um i've studied theology you know mm -hmm. that's the other thing i've studied theology I was actually, since I was the youngest of the family, the afterthought, the youngest grandchild, I was also cultivated for be stepping into the sisterhood. Mm -hmm. Studied with the Sisters of Charity of Mother Seton for a few years in my um, late teens, early 20s, and uh, studying different, from there, studying different religions. And the more information I feel people get, the better off they are. Absolutely. You know, and it just, cause it opens up where we aren't, you're not judging, you're understanding. Yeah. And in becoming a global community, we have to be open and understanding to others. Absolutely. And understanding where others are coming from without automatically judging and stepping into, oh, well, you wear this, this is what you are, or you believe this, this is how you, you should be like, mm -hmm. 
these ideas. So in doing what I do, it's, it's also helping what I have found just in recently is that there's so many young people that haven't had a basis of any spiritual upbringing and they hear a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And this is helping them to cultivate a understanding of the seasons and understanding the, the rotations of how the earth is and having respect for it and having respect for who you are. So it's um, bringing in a whole element of, of these, I'm going to call them these little witches that are popping up because they, they, they don't have a foundation. They, they are really searching for something right now. Yeah. Oh, goodness on so many levels. <laughs> thank you thank you, thank you. <laughs> i'm trying <laughs> yeah <laughs> so mary june i know people are going to be super intrigued and you might have piqued their interest in one of the many areas mm. that you spoke about i know you do some readings online so where can people can where can they connect with you and learn more oh okay well facebook mary june tracy i as soon as you put that in there i do pop up okay um, and also the Guru Mama. So I'm on Facebook and you usually just put my name in, it pops up. So I'm on Facebook, Instagram, the same, the same as uh, Mary June Tracy or at the Guru Mama. Uh, Periscope, uh, I do Periscope every day and I do readings on all of those. Like uh, every once in a while I'll pop up and I'll do um, readings on Instagram live on Thursday afternoons. It's usually when I get on there and do readings, uh, every Tuesday morning. So like tomorrow morning, if you plug into my, uh, Facebook on the guru mama, I will be on tomorrow morning at eight 30 every Tuesday. I'm on there at eight 30 and I give you your astrology reading for the week. Ooh, very cool. So what I do is I have all the um, astrological signs uh, and I have them in a little box. And so I pull them out. So I don't start at Aries. So <laughs> people have to wait. <laughs> I know which signs are very, they don't like, <laughs> those are usually the air signs. Those little Geminis are just like, what, did, did you, what, what? <laughs> yeah, um, I pull, their, pull the name out and then I do an intuitive reading for that sign for the week. And so everybody gets an intuitive reading. It's uh, it's an open reading, like it's not individual. Right. So it's an open one and it's up there. So people can go on, scroll down on my Facebook page on the Guru Mama and they can see other ones that I've done and, um, or on Periscope. And it just, uh, what I find is that since I've been doing that, I've had a lot of feedback that people are just like, wow, this has been helpful for them. Mm. Uh, Instagram. And when I do Instagram live on Thursday afternoons at around 2 PM, and this is Alberta time that I, that I work in that, um, people get, who's ever on there. I try and give everybody who comes in a reading. Awesome. And I, so I scroll through and try and give us, you know, many people a reading because you're only allowed an hour on there and then they, and then, then they time you down and then poof, oh. <laughs> you're off. You're so, done. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I try and get to as many uh, readings on there as I can on Instagram line. Super. Thank you for sharing that. So be sure to show up if you are curious about what is going on in your life, about who you are, learning more about yourself as related to what Mary June was talking about. Those are fantastic resources. Mary June, thank you so much for being here and sharing thank so you. much wisdom with us. Oh, thank you for having me. This was, this was great. Good. Yeah. yeah this was good. Was. This was good. Yeah. <laughs> and for you listening, if you are near Calgary or in Calgary and you would like to come to the festival on Saturday, November 16th, we would love to have you. Don't you want to come and learn all about the moon and how it can help you flow yes. in life? Absolutely. So what I'd love to gift you is a, a complimentary ticket as a giant thank you for listening and showing up for yourself today by tuning in. And so you can get that in one of two ways. You can either type in selfcareticket.com into your browser and uh, click on any of the activate your ticket buttons, enter your name and email, and you'll get all the info for the festival. Or you can do the same thing by clicking on the, um, that website in the show notes. 
and it will take you to that same page so you can get yourself a free ticket and you can extend the offer to a friend. So think of your most stressed out, burnt out, overwhelmed friend and bring her to the festival as well because when we can shift out of that energy and come into our true power, feeling confident and sharing our gifts with the world, that is the kind of world I want to live in and that <clears throat> is why I'm doing the festival so that we have access to information to help us do that. Mary June, thanks again for being here. Thank you so much, Christina. This is You're so welcome. Great. And wonderful listeners, thank you for tuning in. Be sure to come back. We're doing some more festival insider interviews where you're going to get lots more great information like you got today. If you just take away the tidbit of listening with more um, devotion to your body and then amplify that listening to other people around you and to your inner guidance and even to the planets and where they are, then you're going to notice huge differences in your life. So great information. Do come back again. I look forward to connecting with you again next time. Bye-bye for now.